The biggest thing about Web3 is decentralization and removing the trust we have in intermediaries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, today when you work with a bank or some uh, traditional financial institution, you have to trust that they won't lose your money. And then when you go to withdraw your money, it will be there. Mm -hmm. With Web3 and with, with crypto, with decentralized infrastructure, you, don't, you no longer have to trust an intermediary. The smart contract actually holds all the funds and you can verify that your funds are there. And you always have, con you maintain control, self-custody of your assets. So uh, by using peer-to-peer -peer, uh, decentralized protocols, we can actually, you know, you no longer need to trust a bank to connect a lender to a borrower. The lender and the borrower can each hold their own self-custody assets mm -hmm. and connect to each other. And the smart contract is what defines the rules of uh, engagement, you know, who has to repay who. Mm -hmm. And so it allows you to kind of remove the trust in these central institutions that yep. have failed over the years. So co code is law. It code will is be law, yeah. <laughs> executed or on chain. And That's people right. don't need to like trust any organizations or individual persons to make that loan borrowing lending happening. That's right. You've probably heard the Google don't be evil slogan, right? Mm -hmm. Don't be evil sounds like a nice catchphrase, mm -hmm. but it's actually a broken promise because now we know that all of these Web2 companies are selling our data and it's become very uh, hard to maintain privacy online. Mm -hmm. um, with smart contracts, we move from don't be evil to can't be evil because the code is law, right? Mm -hmm. And so it defines what can happen. You have more confidence that, you know, if a new um, CEO of the company that holds your data or your assets uh, you know, comes comes in, he can't just change the rules. Um, mm. And I think that it really helps that, you know, moving from this don't be evil to can't be evil is a big part of Web3. Yeah, that's a really good point. That That is a really good point because it's almost like we have this uh, blockchain technology that are forcing projects and companies to do right, do yeah. the right things. And then uh, the community and the core users, they have a chance to monitor what the project or the founders are, have been doing. That's right. Yep. So Coinbase has a secret master plan. They actually shared on a blog, so it's actually not secret anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> but the secret master plan was really to first bring Bitcoin to the world and to you know, build a central exchange, but then to build decentralized protocols that are more accessible to uh, the people outside the US and you know the billion plus users that may be underbanked or don't have access to financial services. Mm. You know, we often forget in the U.S. that um, outside of the U.S., not everyone has access to the banking services we, we do. Emerging markets. In emerging markets, people pay very high fees. They have to deal with um, local governments that print too much money and their currency loses its value. And so while we enjoy like stable currency in the U.S. and we have access to banking services, many people in the world just have access to a smartphone and don't have any banking services.